I believe we're scheduled to begin with Mr. Dolan. Uh, esteemed members of the committee, thank you for having me. I'm a researcher and historian on the matter of UFOs, particularly as they relate to um, U.S. national security policy. I just have a short statement here. Uh, the UFO problem has involved military personnel around the world for more than 60 years, and it is wrapped in secrecy. Because this subject is so widely ridiculed, it's important to stress why it's worthy of serious attention. Stories of strange objects in the sky actually go far back in time, but from the 1940s to our own era, military personnel from the United States and many other nations have encountered unidentified flying objects, visually or on radar or both, sometimes at close range. These events happen not scores of times, but hundreds of times, perhaps thousands. Sometimes the encounter was nothing more than a solid radar return of an object moving at an incomprehensible speed, performing impossible maneuvers. Sometimes it included the violation of sensitive airspace. Often it involved the dispatch of one or more aircraft to intercept the object. At times, crew members have claimed to see a metallic disc-like object, sometimes with portholes, sometimes with lights, frequently engaged in what appeared to be intelligent, evasive maneuvers. In a very few cases, it appears to have involved the military retrieval of a UFO. In a few others, it involved injury and even death to military personnel. And in a very large number of recorded instances, military personnel who encountered UFOs were adamant that they did not see a natural phenomenon. This is clearly a serious development and it has been treated as such by those groups charged with maintaining national security. The CIA, the NSA, and all branches of military intelligence have historically received UFO reports and discussed the matter as something of serious concern. And yet, the military and other branches of government have created the fiction for public consumption only that the UFO problem is nothing to be concerned about, certainly not the result of little green men. We are fortunate that starting in the 1970s, the U.S. Freedom of Information Act began to help researchers learn some of the truth that lay behind the facade of propaganda. We learned, for example, that some U.S. military analysts initially feared that the Soviet Union might be behind the flying saucer wave of the 1940s and 50s. They studied this possibility but rejected it. They also rejected the possibility that these were secret American technology. And indeed, options quickly narrowed. Either this was something real and alien or it was something conventional but as yet unknown or unexplained. Already by the end of 1947, a contingent of analysts at the Air Technical Intelligence Center, ATIC, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, believed that UFOs were extraterrestrial. And by the summer of 1948, that team prepared what they called an estimate of the situation, stating the extraterrestrial hypothesis. The response, the team was dispersed and reassigned. Yet, thanks to FOIA and the courage of a few senior officials to go on the record, we have a collection of statements about UFOs that are so numerous as to be impossible to mention all of them here. But a few might give you an appropriate flavor of what I mean. Here is one from General Robert B. Landry, Air Force aide to President Harry S. Truman. Landry says, in an oral history interview given uh, about 40 years ago, I was called one afternoon in 1948 to come to the Oval Office. The President wanted to see me. I was directed to report quarterly to the President after consulting with Central Intelligence people as to whether or not any UFO incidents received by them could be considered as having any strategic threatening implications. Landry went on to say that he continued to brief President Truman in conjunction with the CIA quarterly for the rest of the Truman presidency. 
That's no less than 16 briefings. We might want to know why a man as busy as Harry, President Truman, was uh, why he would take the time out of his schedule to have so many meetings about UFOs. And yet we have no official transcript or record of those briefings. This is a statement from a top secret 1948 Air Force intelligence report called Analysis of Flying Object Incidents in the U.S. Quote, the frequency of reported sightings, the similarity in many of the characteristics attributed to the observed objects, and the quality of observers considered as a whole support the contention that some type of flying object has been observed. The origin of the devices is not ascertainable. And uh, just two more quotations here I want to give you. An Air Force intelligence report from 1951 relating to an aerial encounter by a U.S. fighter pilot object described as flat on top and bottom and appearing from a front view to have round edges and slightly beveled quite a bit of detail there no vapor trails or exhaust or visible means of propulsion described as traveling at tremendous speed and one more quote from the early years this one from a former former head of the CIA Roscoe Hillencotter speaking in 1960 Behind the scenes, high-ranking Air Force officers are soberly concerned about UFOs, but through official secrecy and ridicule, many citizens are led to believe the unknown flying objects are nonsense. Now, how much clearer a statement should responsible citizens, academicians, media, and political leadership require before demanding to get some reasonable answers as to what is going on behind the scenes in relation to the phenomenon of UFOs. Because the problem certainly did not end during the 1960s or 1970s or 1980s, but has continued to the present day. During the summer of 2002, just outside this city, over the town of Waldorf of Maryland, dozens of witnesses reported an incredible scene. Multiple jet fighters chasing multiple large unknown objects that were of blue and orange coloration. All the witnesses, two of whom I interviewed personally and several of whom spoke to national media, described the amazing performance and capability of these objects. The Air Force itself admitted that it had scrambled F-16s to investigate unknowns, which it had also admitted it had tracked on at least uh, one of these objects on radar. We also learned that the UFO simply disappeared from the radar. The Air Force conclusion was that it could have been, quote, any number of things. Now perhaps we might like to know precisely which things. What blue object can descend at an 80 degree angle, stop, reverse course, and accelerate away from two F-16 jets near the nation's capital in post 9-11 America? Might be an interesting question to ponder. Over Chicago O'Hare's <coughs> airport, in November 2006, same kind of situation. A dozen United Airlines employees, including at least one pilot while on the ground, saw a hovering disc-shaped object below the clouds. It then accelerated away so fast that it punched a hole through the cloud. United ordered its employees to silence, but one of them reported the event anyway. After denials by United and the FAA, both agencies were forced to acknowledge that indeed those people had made UFO reports. And again, we might ask, what might this have been over one of the busiest airports in the world and why the steadfast silence and denial? These are only some of the better known recent cases. There are in fact an overwhelming number of them. The two largest websites for collecting North American UFO reports, the National UFO Reporting Center and the Mutual UFO Network have a combined total of well over 10,000 reports every year, every year. Now clearly many or most of these would turn out to be something prosaic if they were given an adequate investigation. But go through some of these reports. Many of them are truly incredible and many of them have indeed received follow-up investigation. They are unexplained and at least by our conventional wisdom unexplainable. The combination of astonishing performance, powerful statements from selected senior officials, 
and unremitting silence and dismissal by our political establishment point to a problem. This is not merely the problem of cognitive dissonance. It is the problem of a political system in which the wheels have fallen off the machine. It is imperative in the name of science and responsible public policy that we get those wheels back on and begin a genuine open investigation of this phenomenon. We demand and deserve answers from responsible officials who ought to be in the know. And if they're not in the know, we all need to investigate and find out just who is. Thank you.